Welcome to module two of the Lighting Alterations video series. In this module, we'll focus on the compliance process for indoor lighting alterations under the 2016 energy standards. In this module, we'll discuss the paths to compliance for lighting alteration projects under the 2016 energy standards, including relevant forms, and acceptance testing for lighting controls as part of a lighting alteration project. In general, there are three types of compliance forms that are required for lighting alteration projects. We'll briefly review these now and cover details on each later in the module when we discuss the various compliance pathways. Certificate of Compliance forms are submitted to the building department during the permit phase of the project. The Certificate of Compliance forms help plan checkers verify that the proposed lighting system alteration is in compliance with the energy standards. The Certificate of Installation forms are completed during the installation phase by the installer or contractor. These forms are a declaration by the installer or contractor that the installed lighting system matches what is proposed on the plans and that controls and systems meet all energy standards requirements. The Certificate of Acceptance forms are completed by the acceptance test technician after the lighting system is installed prior to final inspection. The building inspector can reference these forms to help with their inspection and to ensure that all tests have been passed and that the lighting system is operating to code. We'll also discuss which forms need to be completed for each alteration type, as well as introduce a new Certificate of Compliance form, NRCC-LTI dash 06 dash E, indoor lighting existing conditions. Let's discuss the three paths to compliance for lighting alteration projects. These compliance pathways affect both entire luminaire alterations and luminaire component modifications. The first and simplest path to compliance is through reducing the power of luminaires. This compliance path is available for both entire luminaire alterations and luminaire component modifications. This is a new compliance path for 2016. It's important to note that for this compliance path, no redesigning of the interior space, like moving interior walls or replacing ceilings, can be made. In offices, hotels, and retail spaces, the total combined wattage of the altered or replaced luminaires must be at least 50% lower than the existing luminaires. In all other spaces, the total combined wattage of the altered or replaced luminaires must be at least 35% lower than the existing luminaires. If this criteria is satisfied, the only applicable control requirements pertain to manual on-off area controls and specific automatic shutoff controls. These projects are not subject to the multi-level daylighting and demand response control requirements because the power of the luminaires is being reduced substantially. Projects involving luminaire component modifications may also opt to comply via the 50% 35% power reduction compliance pathway. Now let's look at an example of an entire luminaire alteration project that can use this compliance path. A retail business owner replaces all the existing T12 fluorescent troffers on the main sales floor with dedicated LED luminaires, thereby reducing the rate of power of installed luminaires by 55%. This project meets the criteria of the new power reduction compliance path, assuming that the retrofit complied with the necessary manual on-off control and automatic shutoff control requirements. For this compliance path, the existing luminaire power must be documented to verify that the replaced or modified luminaires achieve the specified power reduction. Use NRCC-LTI-01 Table H to record the wattage of the replacement luminaires and luminaires with component modifications. Use NRCC-LTI-06 Table B to record the wattage of existing luminaires being altered. Remember, for offices, hotels, and retail spaces, the reduction must be 50%. In all other spaces, at least a 35% reduction is required. The next compliance pathway is available for projects that deliver a total lighting power that is 85% or less of that allowed under the 2016 standards per section 140.6. This compliance option is available for both entire luminaire alterations and luminaire component modifications. 
With this compliance option, qualifying projects must include manual on-off controls, bi-level or multi-level lighting controls, and shutoff controls. To satisfy multi-level lighting control requirements, the system must provide either one control step between 30% and 70% of full power, or meet all multi-level lighting control requirements in section 130.1b. In the 2016 energy standards, the option to provide one control step between 30% and 70% of full power now applies to the enclosed space and not to each luminaire. This means that switching alternate luminaires or rows of luminaires can be used to meet multi-level lighting control requirements. Previously, each luminaire was required to have a step between 30 and 70 percent, which meant installation of dimming ballast or drivers for each fixture. A qualifying project under this compliance pathway would be one, for example, where new dedicated LED luminaires replace standard T8 fluorescents. The rated power reduction is 30 percent, so the project cannot take the 50 percent, 35 percent power reduction compliance path. However, the new lighting power is less than 85% of the lighting power allowance per section 140.6. This project must include manual on-off controls, shut-off controls, and a simple multi-level control scheme. In this example, the multi-level control step applies to the space as a whole. So to achieve compliance, controls may switch alternate luminaires or groups of luminaires. Each luminaire is not required to have individual multi-level control. For this compliance option, the lighting power allowance must be calculated using either the complete building method, area category method, or tailored method. Again, the proposed retrofit must deliver a lighting power that is 85% or less than allowed under section 140.6. For these projects, fill out the applicable certificate of compliance forms LTI-01, LTI-02, and LTI-03. These Certificate of Compliance forms document lighting power allowance, proposed lighting, and proposed controls. Forms LTI-04 through 06 may also be required depending on the project scope. Use Table H on Certificate of Compliance LTI-01 to record information on the replacement luminaires, newly installed luminaires, altered luminaires, and luminaires with component modifications. Use LTI-03 to determine lighting power allowance specified under section 140.6 and use table C of LTI-01 to determine the 85% allowance. The last path to compliance states that alterations with proposed lighting power of more than 85% and up to 100% of that allowed by the standards must meet all applicable control requirements in section 130.1. These requirements apply to both entire luminaire alterations and luminaire component modifications. An example of this type of project is one where dedicated LED luminaires are used to replace low wattage T8s in a small office building. The building owner wants to reap the benefits of LED lighting, such as long life and controllability even though the energy savings between the LED system and her current fluorescent system is only 12%. If the resultant lighting power is between 85% and 100% of the allowed lighting power, the project must include the full set of lighting control requirements, including daylighting and demand response controls, if applicable. Projects using this compliance pathway must include manual on-off controls, automatic shutoff controls, multi-level controls, daylighting controls, and demand response controls if applicable. Therefore, several compliance forms are needed. Fill out Certificate of Compliance Documents NRCC-LTI-01, LTI-02, and LTI-03 for all projects. LTI-04 and LTI-05 may be required depending on the project scope. Use NRCC-LTI-01 Table H to record information on the replacement luminaires, newly installed luminaires, altered luminaires, and luminaires with component modifications. Lighting wiring alterations have a single path to compliance. These alterations must meet the lighting power allowance provided in section 140.6. 
they must also meet certain lighting control requirements contained in Section 130.1, such as those for manual on-off controls and shutoff controls. Automatic daylighting controls are only required when the alteration includes 10 or more luminaires in a primary side-lit daylit zone or skylit daylit zone. Also, multi-level control requirements are reduced. The project need only include one control step for the entire space between 30 and 70 percent. For lighting wiring alterations, fill out compliance forms NRCC-LTI-01, LTI-02, and LTI-03 for all projects. LTI-04 through 6 may be required depending on the project scope. Use LTI-01 Table H to record information of the replacement luminaires, newly installed luminaires, altered luminaires, and luminaires with component modifications. For more information on lighting control requirements, watch the Lighting Control Systems video series on the California Energy Commission website. Now that we're familiar with the compliance process for indoor lighting alterations, we'll be looking at when acceptance testing is required. The lighting control's acceptance testing requirement is triggered when certain indoor and outdoor lighting controls are installed. This includes automatic shutoff controls, automatic daylighting controls, demand responsive controls, institutionalized tuning controls, motion controls, outdoor photo controls, and part night lighting controls. These controls must comply with acceptance testing requirements per section 130.4. A new exception for lighting alteration states that when a lighting alteration project adds lighting controls to control 20 or fewer luminaires for the entire project, the project is exempt from acceptance testing. Let's take a look at an example. In addition to a fluorescent to LED conversion, the building owner asks for occupancy control. The contractor installs three new occupancy sensors in the space and each controls 10 luminaires. Is acceptance testing required? The answer is yes. The project does not meet the exception since there is a total of 30 luminaires being controlled by the new sensors. However, if each sensor only controlled five luminaires, bringing the total down to 15, the project would be exempt from acceptance test requirements contained in section 130.4. If you would like to learn more about acceptance testing in the 2016 Energy Standards, the people involved in the process, and training information, watch the Lighting Controls Acceptance Testing training video series at the California Energy Commission website. Before we end this module, let's review what we've learned. We learned the three paths to compliance, applicable to both entire luminaire alterations and luminaire component modifications. The first is the 50-35% power reduction option, which also eliminates the need for multi-level daylighting and demand response controls. The second is the 85% or less lighting power allowance option. If your project consumes 85% or less power as compared to the 2016 lighting power allowance requirements, this might be the option for you. It also comes with some reduced control requirements. The third option is for projects with a lighting power of more than 85%, up to 100% of that allowed by the 2016 standards. With this compliance path, all applicable lighting control requirements contained in section 130.1 must be followed. Lighting wiring alterations have a single compliance option under the 2016 standards per section 141.0 B2K. This concludes module two. For more information on additions and alterations, please visit the Energy Commission website at www.energy.ca.gov forward slash title 24 forward slash 2016 standards.